Okay, so we're doing a quick test of i5 versus i7. This is the Surface Book, but we're using we're not using the Nvidia GPU. We're using the i5 Intel HD 520 graphics, and here we've got the Core i7 Surface Pro 4 using the Intel 540 with an extra uh, 24 EU units and also uh, 64 megabytes of the ED RAM. So it's much more powerful set up, but let's take a look and see how it performs in a benchmark test really quickly. This is 1080p and right off the bat you can see this device had a little bit of power limit throttling going on. There you go. So you can see the yellow. It's being limited right off the bat. Um, there's about 34 frames a second here and 20 frames a second there which is actually quite good uh, for the i7. You can see that the core frequency on this device is already being limited to 1.3 gigahertz over there, 2.8. And uh, they're both processor graphics are at 950 at this point in the game. About 40 frames, 20 frames over there. So this machine is being throttled by power limit, not thermal limit. You can see that the, the uh, temperature is well in check right there. But it's, it's basically programmed to say, I don't want you to use too many watts. And so it, right off the bat, it, it's limiting itself. It's clocking down. Nevertheless, the frame rate is much higher on this particular device versus this particular device. So we end the Service Pro 4 with the i7, ends up at an average frames per second of 36 frames a second, which is very decent. Um, and on this one, we end up with a frame per second of 19.8. That's 1080p normal settings. So you can see that it's, it's quite a bit more powerful than the i5. However, it's actually way more powerful than the i5, but it's being limited, like right off the bat, it's, it's slowing itself down. Um, in fact, if, if, as we keep this running, we'll see the extended duration uh, pulling the performance of this down. So I'm gonna let this kind of sit here on the screen, use up the, the uh, you know, let these heat up, let their thermals, equalize under heavy use and you can already see that the performance gain that the i7 had over the i5 it has diminished so the i5 is running 17 frames a second over here we're running 23 and once again it's not because of heat in fact it's quite cool it's about 62 degrees celsius uh, but the power limit throttling is killing the i7. Now there may be some things we can do to alleviate that, which we're going to try in a minute, but right off the bat, it's, it can be seen that it's, there's a lot more performance to be had here, but it's not being utilized just to, you know, not let this Pro 4 use the energy that it wants to use. So, all in all, the i7 is going to net you more performance, though, even while it's throttling. Look at that. So you've got 26 frames per second versus 17. So it's quite a bump in performance, even while throttled, but it could be a lot more. Now, we're going to get into that. We're going to show how we can change this baseline. We're going to try to alleviate the power limit throttling. We're going to undervolt. We're going to try to use less power and with the same clocks and see what we can do. But this is the first look at how the i7 compares to the i5. Okay, we're back. After letting both of these machines uh, fully saturate in how they're going to be acting under their power limit throttling. These are stock settings, 1080p, um, benchmark test using Tomb Raider and these are both exact same settings and when we ran the initial test the i7 was 55 percent quicker in benchmark speed so that's pretty good but it then throttles fairly heavily it's got a lot of really advanced hardware in here that's powerful 
but it's not able to take advantage of it. Otherwise, it just burns up way too much power, and Intel's not prepared to let it use that much power, so it power limit throttles it back. So, uh, even when fully throttled, uh, both, of the, both of these machines, the i7, when throttled, throttled to nothing, basically, is still 30% quicker than the i5 graphics. So 520 versus 540, even in extended gaming, the i7 is 30% faster than the Core i5. Now, the next step is going to be really trying to tune this Core i7 and see how well we can improve the performance by undervolting it and reducing the throttling if possible. I don't know if it's going to be possible as some of these new Skylake CPUs are not responding to the same things that past processors have, but we'll look at that in the next video. But the takeaways are the i7 is, despite the clocks being way lower than the i5 due to throttling, power throttling, um, it still beats it out by quite a bit. Now, just as a quick note, if you're using the Surface Book, the Surface Book GPU in this particular 1080p benchmark is about 38% quicker than the Core i7, and the i7 graphics versus the i5 520 graphics, uh, the i7, uh, when it's not throttling or heavily throttling, it's about 55% quicker than the i5, but an extended throttling, the lead reduces to only about 30%. So, anyways, I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. We'll get into what we can do to really exploit the power of this i7 in the next video. So thanks for watching.